All right, you came to Charlotte, and then what? Big and then what? Oh, we should give you a mic, eh? So I came to Charlotte uh, in May, um, and that was a scary transition for me. Um, you know, I felt like kind of like a whisper when I was at school uh, that said, you need to be in Charlotte. And I was like, God, why, why do I need to be in Charlotte? I don't, what's in Charlotte? I mean, Anna, Anna was here. That was one part of it. But it was so, no, but it was so much bigger than that. Um, you know, here I am now, five months later after making that decision, I feel like I've been here my whole life. This community, this church is so loving, so amazing, and God has just worked incredible, incredible wonders in my life, but a, a decision had to, had to be made, and like so many people that I've met, you know, it's a decision that when, when you look at it, you're like, I should go left. It makes sense to go left, oh. right? Every reason, every person I know tells me I should go left, but there's a part of you that says, you need to go right, and you're not sure what that is, and, and so God called me down to Charlotte, um, been here now, like I said, five months, loving this community, loving this team that we're with, and just experiencing God fully, really have. Um, that decision four years ago, which you saw in the video, which, by the way, Dustin did that video. He's not here today because his wife uh, had a baby uh, the other week. But uh, Last night. No, last night. I apologize. <laughs> last night. Um, but he did a fantastic job on that video, so if you see him, definitely give him a hug and thank him. Um, but that decision to say yes, um, what was your other choice? What were the two choices? So the two choices. So I'm not sure who in here is a parent with a college-age student, um, but if you are or have, you know that senior year is about one thing. It's about getting a job. <laughs> and uh, I had that job. Uh, I had a job locked up. Uh, it was about, I think it was like October when I had the job. So perfect. I could just cruise to the finish line. Um, great opportunity in D.C. And every time I kept going back to that decision, I just felt like it wasn't right that there was something bigger than myself that needed to be accomplished and that the easy choice of just staying in D.C., working a job, and, and just making that my life wasn't what was in store for me. Um, that again, like I had that decision four years ago, that there was something I needed to take a risk with, something that I needed to, to jump towards, um, and that was Charlotte. So I, it was, a, it was a scary moment for my parents, but 24 hours after I graduated from, from college, I just walked across the stage the day before. I was in a coffee shop with my parents. I said, hey, guys, I'm moving to Charlotte. And they're like, what? <laughs> we just spent this much money to send you to school, and now you're going to not have a job? And I said, listen, this is, this is something so much bigger than me, um, and I need you to just trust me. I need you to know that God is calling me into a deeper relationship, into deeper waters with him. And so I moved. I spent my graduation money. I packed up a U-Haul, and I drove down here. And I said, what, what's next, God? You know? So what was next? What was next was getting involved with this church. I constantly felt like God was saying, show up. Just show up. Just be there. Be a part of something. Get involved um, and love on people. You know? and, and, then, and then bigger than that, but to share my story, um, share what has... God has been doing in my life. It was a, it was a hard decision to make uh, with all the circumstances, but you know, it was easy when I knew what God could do for my life. Um, and that's why you see me on stage playing drums with Eric. Yeah, let's, walk, let's walk through that. So you came, you didn't, you didn't just jump on, right? You were here for a while. No, I just showed up. And it's like, I'm showed up, gave him some sticks. Uh, give me the sticks, let's go. That's how Eric runs the team. That's how he runs the team. Um, <laughs> it's really like that. Uh, no, it was another moment where I'm walking in, so as you saw from the video, I've been playing drums since I was six. Around 18, 19 years old, I said, I don't like this anymore. I don't want to do this. I'm sure some young kids here playing soccer or football or whatnot, imagine if that, that sport that you guys do just wasn't fun anymore. Mm. You don't want to do it. When you're a kid, it's all about fun. Bottom line is fun. How much fun can I have? Um, and the drums weren't fun for me anymore. And that's why you know, I went to school, didn't really play, thought that was some kind of hobby I'd put on a shelf for a while. Um, so come here to the net. I'm sitting in, 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 the, in the chairs just like you. And God says, you should be back on the stage. And I was like, ah, God, come on. Like, you know, like they already have two drummers. I mean, you've seen Boyd and Al up there smashing away. Like one drummer is enough for most bands. Trust me. <laughs> um, it's a lot of noise. Um, but God kept calling me saying, you need to be on the stage. You need to, you need to be on that team. Um, 
And so I did, and you can ask Eric, I bugged him all the time. I said, Eric, I know you don't really know me, but I feel like God's calling me to, to, to offer myself for this team. Because the music was so big for me. I knew that drums, worship music, what that was for me was a connection with Jesus. That was a relationship. I knew how good that felt when you could be sitting there and listening and praising and worshiping God um, because his heart is in the music that we play. Mm. And I knew that God had given me gifts, gifts with my hands and gifts with my ears, and that I wanted to give back in that way. Mm. I, I, pull the curtain back a little bit. What, what is it like to be on the team? Like 97% of the people sitting here have no idea. Like they see the band show up on, on Sunday, play, and then roll out. What, what is that like to be on that team with Eric? So being on the team with Eric is uh, being like on a speeding train that never stops. <laughs> it is constantly moving. We are constantly doing. And, and something you should know about Eric is that he loves what we do here. Mm. And that's something that really took me back was the level of love and intentionality that he pours out every single week. A little story for you. I hope I'm not embarrassing you, Eric. So I come here sometimes. So, so Eric will get here on Saturdays usually late at night, and he will set everything up, mic everything, make sure the lights are all right. But it's not just like a check the box. It is a full-blown, intentional process. And I came one time to help out, and I remember I was packing up and leaving at like 11.30, and I said, Eric, are you gonna, are you gonna come with me? He said, nah, I'm gonna erase all the lights, so all these lights are on sets. He said, I'm gonna erase them all and redo them. I said, why, why, why are you gonna do that? They're fine, they didn't change from last week. <laughs> and Eric says, no, no, no. It's, it's got to be more. So being on the worship team is, is about pouring not only into ourselves with the music that we're playing, but pouring into you guys um, about getting in you know, every Sunday and just loving through our instruments and pushing that out to you guys so you guys can connect. That's what that's about. You know, these aren't just songs we're singing. You read these lyrics. These are, these are beautiful testimonies and, and love and encouragement um, and so being a part of that team has opened my eyes and my heart to a level of love um, for not just myself and my instrument, but for what we can give uh, to you guys and give to anybody who comes to these doors. Okay, in 30 seconds, what does a Wednesday night rehearsal look like? <laughs> it's long. It's not 30 seconds, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> um, we get there, and it's, it's not just, a, like I said, it's not just checking a box. We don't just get there and, and play and go home. We pray about the songs we're doing. We know ahead of time, or at least Eric does, he knows what the message is. So we craft our songs around what that message is. Um, and we pray, and we have a small group. We have heart-sharing moments um, to make sure that we aren't just playing instruments. Um, so we do that for about, I would say, an hour, an hour 15. We pray, and we talk, and we share before we even touch an instrument. And then we actually sit down and practice um, so that it sounds great on Sunday. Mm. All right, so what does baptism, what does this baptism mean to you? Baptism. It's amazing for me. When I learned what baptism was, what it could be, for me it was just the ultimate sign of a public declaration of my love for Christ. Mm. No better way than to be a part of this community, this community which God called me to be in, uh, and to stand up in front of you guys and, and get dunked and, and become a truly one in one with Christ. I mean, we talked about um, in the series in the last few weeks, fan or follower, you need to find the relationship. And this is that moment when I say to all of you, you know, I love Christ. I'm sold out. Mm. You know, he's changed my life in so many ways I can't even count. And the blessing of saying yes and inviting him in is so great um, that this is something that's just been on my heart and that I really want to do. And, and Josh, why now, man? You've been, you've been chasing after him for a bit. Why now? That's all part of God's story. Uh, there were multiple times when I thought, oh, I should go. I should do it now. Um, but it didn't feel right for me. Um, I felt like it wasn't something that I needed to do because it was just a box I needed to check. Again, it's all about not checking the box with Christianity. It's about, it's about being real and owning it. And I, I didn't want to do it at a church I wasn't, you know, felt like I wasn't really a part of. Um, I didn't want to do it in front of, you know, people I didn't really know. I feel like I know this community. I feel like I can love on this community. And I feel like this is, this is, this is the moment God wanted me to have um, to be baptized uh, to this beautiful, beautiful faith. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Eric, we'll be back.